To animate our objects, we'll want to be in our dope sheet timeline. If we've been drawing with our grease pencil, we'll probably be in our grease pencil timeline. So that's available down in your bottom panel, the top left hand corner of your bottom panel. You should choose dope sheet when we're choosing to animate individual pieces and parts of our background and or characters. If we're in the grease pencil timeline that will enable us to animate the actual grease pencil object or our lines independently, but for the most part we're going to be in our dope sheet timeline. Now that I've created my character artwork, I can choose to select this entire drawing and move it around a little bit using motion paths. So with my drawing selected, my layers panel, I'll choose I on the keyboard to create a new keyframe and choose location, rotation, and scale. I'll make sure that I have keyframes for all of those. I can now move my timeline a little bit, and because we're doing pose to pose animations, I'm going to set the beginning pose and the end pose. I'm going to choose the move tool or G on the keyboard. Move my character up a bit, and I'll choose R to rotate. I can do a number of things. I can stretch it, a little bit of stretch and squash. And once I've created the transformation, once I've finished placing my character, I'll hit I again to set a new keyframe. And Blender will automatically create the in-betweens. Now, if I want to set another action somewhere in between here, and then I'll set a new keyframe, hitting I on the keyboard, and you can see the results by scrubbing through in your timeline. Now before we go ahead and start moving and rotating and animating our objects, our characters and our scene, we should make sure that their center point is where we want it to be. But you'll notice if I am to scale my character here, it scales up from this point near the bottom of the screen. That's where its origin point is. I might have wanted that in this instance, but if I don't want that and I want to change the origin point or the center of my object, to, let's say to be right in the middle of my character, I need to reset that point. So I'll select my character in my layers panel to the right. I'm in object mode now, so I want to switch it over to edit mode. In edit mode, I can select all of my object by hitting A. That'll select all of the materials within my object. And I'm going to choose cursor to select it. By hitting shift and then S on the keyboard, that will bring up this dialog right in the middle of our screen. That will bring my cursor to the selected center point of my image. Now I can go back to object mode, click on object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. I also have a number of other options. That's setting the origin to the geometry, the center of mass, volume, and surface. What we're going to be using is our 3D cursor. If we don't have our 3D cursor placed, we can select geometry and it'll basically put it in the same place that we wanted it to be anyways. Unless I change the cursor in edit mode. So if I want my origin mode to be at the tail, for instance, I'll choose cursor, click on that area, go back to object mode, and set the origin to the 3D cursor. And that will place the cursor down at the tip of the tail. Once more, we'll go into edit mode, select cursor. If I want the pivot point to be in the middle of my fox body, I'll click in the middle of the body, go back to object mode, choose object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor, and then my pivot point will be in the middle of the body. Now, because I changed my pivot point or origin, after I had made my animation, my animation now appears out of sync. So we can now go through each keyframe of the animation and correct the keyframes by moving or adjusting the position of our character, hitting I for set keyframe and repeating the process for each of the keyframes just by resetting the position for each keyframe.
remember to hit I to place or replace the keyframe. Now another option is in the timeline to just select all of the keyframes and delete them and start over. X on your keyboard will allow you to delete the keyframes. If you're not seeing the timeline in your bottom timeline panel, you may be in Grease Pencil or one of the other editors. We need to be in Dope Sheet to view the timeline to enable us to move our entire character around using motion paths and keyframes. So make sure that you're in the Dope Sheet when we're working with our timeline animation. I choose to do a frame by frame animation and it might be appropriate for this character because my character is in the distance and it'd be a fairly quick frame by frame animation to create. So to begin creating a frame by frame animation, I want to be in the same layer that my character's outlines are in. To see the character outlines, I'm going to make the fills invisible and this is all available in your Object Data Properties tab on the right hand side. I'll make sure that the fill is invisible. My eyes are on a separate layer, so I will make those invisible as well. I'll be animated separately. And in my lines layer, that creates all of the outlines for my character. My character animation starts at 140 in my timeline. And remember, we're in the dope sheet timeline. We'll be doing a pose to pose animation, which means that we'll set the beginning pose and the end pose and then creating the individual poses in between. But for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to go to frame 142. That's because I'll be animating on twos. Every two frames, that'll cut our time in half. Select the draw mode and our drawing will turn gray. We'll make sure that I've got my ink pen selected and I've got a black stroke. Make sure that all my brush settings are the same and then I can start drawing. So again, I'm on 142. My animation starts on 140 in the timeline. On 142, I will begin redrawing my animation. And you'll continue to move two frames further if you're doing a straight ahead animation or if you're doing pose to pose you'll just be creating all of the in-between animations between the two poses but once you draw in the timeline area within the layer that contains your lines it will automatically onion skin the previous and next layers for you and you can see your previous layers as a different color to give you a guide when we go back into object mode, you can see the results of our animation. Now we want to change the fill to match our animation. So on frame 142, where we created our new frame animation, we'll now go back to our object data properties tab, make our fill colors invisible. And with that layer selected, I can go into sculpt mode and just reposition the elements by pushing those fills around where I want them to be. We'll lock our lines layer so that they are not affected. To match up our fill to our stroke lines in our frame to frame animation, We'll lock all of the layers on top in our Object Data Properties panel. Make sure that all of our layers on top of our fill colors are locked and that only our fill is visible and our lines are visible so that we can see where we're trying to move our fill shapes. And then I can choose Sculpt Mode and push and grab the various areas of my fill to make them match the lines. You can also redraw 
your fills recreate those. Just depends what works best for your character. Go back into object mode to see your progress. If you choose to fill your new shapes, we can go back into draw mode, choose the appropriate fill color, and then just draw in our new shapes. Just follow the lines that you had created in your frame by frame animation. It's okay if you get a few little issues. If you're not exactly straight and perfect because we can always go back into sculpt mode and just adjust the lines slightly. At this point I can also use the fill tool in draw mode and fill an area in any areas that I just need to refill. Preview your work in object mode. Continue to adjust the character drawings as you see fit with the sculpt mode. We're currently in our dope sheet timeline. We select the grease pencil timeline. It gives us the option to delete keyframes that are specifically related to our grease pencil. So in the timeline, you can see the keyframes that we set up in frame 142. I can now select those keyframes by dragging around them, turning them yellow to show that they're selected, and then hitting X to delete the keyframes. If I want to move them to another keyframe, let's say we created a, a our first pose within our pose to pose animation and we want to make a second pose close by we can then move that end pose further along the timeline. I'm going to delete those keyframes however so that we have just one continuous piece of artwork from frame 140 on. Now while in edit mode I'll choose A on the keyboard to select all of our artwork. Make sure that all of our layers are unlocked in our object data properties panel and that they're all visible and now I can choose something called a modifier we'll click on the little wrench icon this is under modifier properties and we're going to choose add modifier this modifier is called noise you'll immediately see something happening our, our uh, character has gone into a bit of conniption and we can adjust all of the parameters including the position, the strength, and the thickness of line. We can also adjust the scale of the noise. So to make it look like animation squiggle vision, we're just going to want a little bit added to each one of these position, strength, thickness, and the noise scale. Now when we scrub in our timeline, we should see our squiggle vision effect taking place. Go back to object mode and hit the space bar to see the squiggle vision animation play out. Hit spacebar again to stop the playback. And let's say I don't want my fill to be affected. I only want my lines to be affected by the squiggle vision. I'll remove this modifier. I'll go back to our object data properties panel and I'll lock the layer that contains our fills. Now with that layer locked, I'll go back and add that modifier once again, the noise modifier and keep it on randomize. And when I play back the animation by hitting the space bar, it should show us the squiggle vision in action. Just continue adjusting the strengths and all of the things that you need to adjust to make it look the way you want. It looks like if position is set to zero and strengths and thickness are bumped up a little bit, you're going to get a more believable pencil squiggle vision effect. Strengths appears to 
control the opacity. So try just using thickness and scale. I'm finding a combination of position, thickness, and scale to be working pretty well for me. To test out our squiggle vision effect, we'll need to open up our object data properties tab. And I'm going to make the, the uh, GP layer invisible. This is the layer that we use to create our fills. We used strokes to close the gaps and that allowed us to create the fill for a character. So we don't need those visible. We can turn off onion skinning by clicking that button in between the eyeball and the little arrow. And what I want to do is, is change the layer that contains my fill right now. Uh, this is a specific material and the outline that I have when, uh, when I play back to Google Vision actually overlays or it, it goes over top and shows gaps in my fill layer. So I'm going to turn on the stroke for this fill layer. I'm going to make sure that this stroke is the same color, same base color as my fill. And that'll provide me with a stroke around the character, around the fill. So that way I don't have any gaps between the outlines of my character and the fill shape. I can preview the effect in object mode. I'll just click away from my character to see the full effect and hit the space bar or play to play the animation. I can reset the playhead as it's playing as well just to loop the animation. And there it is, squiggle vision.